Now this is a HomePod. And this is a Betamax videotape from the 1980s. Now, you might have to stick with me on this one, but I think that there are similarities between these two products. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. Now, you might find this hard to believe, but below this young looking boyish exterior, I'm actually old enough to remember the video format wars of the 1980s. VHS versus Betamax, JVC versus Sony. Now, spoiler alert, VHS won. So that must mean that VHS was a superior format. Well, there you'd be wrong. VHS owned by JVC was licensed out to anyone who wanted to make a machine. And market forces meant that those machines were cheap and cheerful and perhaps not always of the best quality. Betamax, on the other hand, was initially only manufactured by Sony and to a very high standard. Now, the tapes themselves VHS, quite large and cumbersome. Betamax, much more compact. What about the resolution? Well, VHS, 240 lines. Betamax, 250. And also, generally admitted to have a more stable picture and superior sound quality. So all things considered, why did VHS win? Now, back in the 1980s, most of us would spend an evening just sitting in a darkened room, sobbing uncontrollably and waiting for the internet to be invented. But just occasionally, if there was enough magic electricity in the meter and our candles hadn't burned out completely, we'd jump into our two CVs and put 10 P's worth of petrol in and venture off down to the video rental store to hire out a movie. So when you walked into a video rental store like blockbusters, for example, there would be shelf upon shelf upon shelf of VHS tapes for you to rent out. Over in one corner, there would be a single shelf with just one Betamax videotape on it. And there'd be a couple of sad individuals skulking in that corner, trying to look inconspicuous, wishing that they were down the road being arrested for curb crawling, because that would be a good deal less embarrassing than admitting to owning a Betamax. So with VHS ruling Blockbuster, it wasn't long before sales of VHS recorders started going up and Betamax started going down and Betamax became the byword for crap. VHS won the video format wars of the 1980s because of clever marketing. It won because of strategic deals. When you went into Blockbusters, the films that you wanted to rent were all available only on that format. VHS won the video format wars of the 1980s, despite, on a purely technical level, being absolute shite. So that's a bit of a history of the VHS Betamax video wars of the 1980s, but what on earth has that got to do with the HomePod? So if I'm going to convince you that HomePod is like Betamax, then we need something that's going to represent VHS. And for that, I'm going to nominate Amazon's Alexa. Now I don't have one of those, so instead I'm going to use this money box. And so that I don't set off your speakers in your house, instead of calling it the A word, I'm going to refer to it as Jeff. So let's look at the evidence. Betamax was manufactured only by Sony, at least initially, and Siri and HomePod are only available from Apple. Betamax was the more expensive option. HomePod is the pricier option, and certainly more expensive than the cheaper Jeffs that you could buy on the market. Sony's Betamax used higher quality components, giving you a good picture and better sound quality. Similarly, HomePod is made with some cracking hardware, and the cheaper Jeffs aren't. Amazon are winning the smart speaker wars of the 2020s because of clever marketing. Amazon are winning because of strategic partnerships. 
Amazon are winning the smart speaker wars of the 2020s, despite the fact that most people be better off buying a competitor product. If you're looking for a smart speaker and you own an Android phone, or perhaps you use Google's ecosystem, or you just want a speaker that you can shout random things at, after all, Google have a kind of search engine they've been working on for a while, then probably a Google Assistant is going to be the best smart speaker for you. If you use Apple's ecosystem, you have an iPhone, you use calendar and reminders, then Siri on any device is going to be the best choice for you. And if you have a HomePod, you can hand off phone calls and music as you walk past the speaker, something you definitely can't do with a Jeff. So Google and Android, Apple and Siri, it kind of makes sense. And yet consumers have proved one thing in the 1980s and they have proved it again in the 2020s. And that is that they're gullible. So can we learn anything from the video format wars of the 1980s and apply that logic to the speaker wars of the 2020s? Well, kind of yes and no. There are, as we've seen, some comparisons, but there's a very important 21st century element to this that didn't apply in the 1980s. Back when JVC were battling against Sony, both were trying to do basically the same thing. They were trying to sell hardware to the masses and make a profit. Now in the 2020s, Apple and particularly Amazon have different business models. Apple are trying to sell hardware and make a profit. Now, they're not doing a particularly great job with that. The margin on the HomePod is estimated to be about 38%. For a hardware product, that's not great. In fact, some commentators suggest it's even less than that. You may think a HomePod is expensive, and it is if you compare it to Jeff's, but if you look at the quality of the components that go into the speaker, it's actually quite cheap. They've made it too good. Jeff's, on the other hand, are available from lots of different manufacturers, and that is the point. Amazon don't really care about how much money they make from hardware sales. They want to get the speaker into your home. They want to listen to what you're doing with it because that is where they make their money. So will we see a future where Apple license Amazon's Jeff technology? Well, on a scale of one to 10, where one is unlikely and 10 is highly likely, I rank that at about minus 463. Yep, it's never gonna happen. But if Amazon are winning the smart speaker wars of the 2020s, shouldn't the other manufacturers just give up like Sony did in the 1980s? Well, no, because the business model as we've discussed is different. Apple are playing the privacy card. Amazon are definitely spying on you. And Google are sitting somewhere in between. Now with the connected home over IP project, all the speakers are going to basically be doing the same thing with your smart home in the future. So the differentiators between the speakers are going to narrow. That's good news for Apple and not so good news for Amazon. But are they too far in the lead already? Is it really a race that's already been run? I'd love to know your comments, please leave them below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more bonkers content like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.